2.0 version of the egg raider. Uh, it's an egg sucking leech variation. It's one of my favorite. I catch everything from steelhead to brown trout on this. Uh, when I travel Alaska, I have variations of this in my box. So it's just, just an all around good fly. It's actually simple to tie once you get the steps down, the layering process done. Um, it has a lot of body, but it is a very compact, small platform. So let's tie her up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, uh, any straight shank, round eye, this is an up eye. So what you're gonna do is just take your, your straight shank, you're gonna slide your bead on, and then I'm gonna put this right in my regal shank vise and just lock it in. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you put a very good thread base down. You don't want your material moving so I just take my time. I'm using a really thin six or an eight aught Vivas thread. I, I don't need a lot of, it's a very, it's very strong. I put a lot of pressure on it, but it's very thin diameter. So grab your old pair of scissors. You can use my intruder wire. You can use some bite wire. I'm just using what I have in front of me and 30 pounds. So if you tie on, if you're blessed to tie on a Regal, they have this little stem up here. It is the perfect, get every one of your flies riding the same length of your wire, the same everything. Just take and loop that wire right around that post, crimp it, lay it over the top and lock it in. So it's equal distance every time. So when you put the hook on this, it will end up finishing out roughly around two inches, which I don't want my trailer hook hanging too far back. And I like to put a really good I'm giving it some tension and I'm really locking this thread in. If you wanna glue it, you can glue it, but I'm gonna put a set of eyes on these, a set of dumbbell eyes and add a little glue there. So that's usually all that I need. A pair of green pseudo eyes. Don't worry about that bead being loose there in the front. You don't want that eye so tight to it that you don't have any room to work in front. So I have just a minute amount of space there to be able to work with. Put a little drop in there and that firms that right up. Take my thread now and go back to the back. So I'm using uh, some uh, black barred groovy strips. These just happen to be like an olive tan yellow coloration. I'm um, thinking spring, so I'm thinking like little natural creek chubs and little natural minnows and stuff like that in the, in the creek. So I'm trying to give myself just something more in that natural range. So what do you want to do is like, I take this stuff and I pull on it and I pull any of that loose fiber out of it. Just stretch that hide a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll measure it out. Just so basically the hide on that tail ends about roughly where my hook's gonna end. And that's going to be my connection point. So I just mark it. And then what I do is I come and I give myself about an inch further. Because you're going to need that to wrap. So it's taken right over the top, tie our bunny in. If you need to wet some fibers, get them out of the way. And I don't try to rush this process. I get it locked in where I want it. I make sure I'm happy with it. And then I do about 12 wraps there. Really lock that in. Flip up your hide, come underneath it and just work your way up, you know, about an eighth of an inch. Take that bunny, turn it so it's hide down and don't wrap over top of itself. Just make one, two wraps right in front to build a, just a nice little collar and then lock that all down and trim off that excess so what you'll see here is we have a nice collar we got our tail you'll notice it wants to fan out a little bit all right so we have all that coverage i just want to add a little extra movement to the fly so i'm not trying to make this fly extremely flashy but i'm going to take just some standard matte white uh, flashaboo, you know, about four, five strands because I'm going to fold it over on top of itself. 
Not a big deal with, the, with any of these flash boosts or flash. I just don't want an e every fiber to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go right over the top. Basically, the length of the tail are just shorter. Lock that in. Fold it over. Lock that in. And then I'm just going to make sure that these are all cut different. So you have different lengths going on on that back flash. So it doesn't take much to make, as you see, just your hand movement gets that stuff fluttering. So now we're gonna put the whole meat and potatoes of this fly pattern together. Okay, so we're gonna take one and a half inch chromatic brushes. So this is your, your live bait, and this is your uh, Erie Emerald Shiner. And uh, everything I do, I like to blend different colors. So that way you just have some different contrast levels, a little different color flash, everything else in there. It's very subtle, but it works really well. You're gonna take your white, tie it in. Take your olive, tie it in. So once I've got those locked in, what I'm gonna do is put them both together and I'm gonna to measure it out. Make sure your flash, everything else is out of the way. Now until you get used to doing this, I would recommend that you cut it a little longer so I like to make sure I can get as many flies as I can out of these brushes. So I'm gonna be roughly like four inches. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make that cut right there. So you'll notice they're both together. So what you do is you take and you fold your olive down. And what you do wanna do is treat it just like a table. It should face down and toward you. And you might have to bend the wire a little bit, just depending to get it all to flow. And the white should be straight up and down. And as soon as I get this the way I want it, what I'll do is I'll show you, I'll lift it up so you can see what I see. So see how I have a shelf that's facing toward me, and then this is straight up and down. All right. So now I can add whatever accents and colors and stuff that I want in here. In this case, we're going to add some uh, ostrich and some, and some uh, contrasting flash. Like I don't have an exact on number that I like to use. I usually try to be in that 20 to 25 range and just grab like a nice little pile of them. You're not going to use like this is a very long feather here. So I want to measure it out where it's not past my tail. And this is going to really mushroom out once we tie it in. So what I do is I get it to where I want it. Come in and cut off that excess. Kind of get it out of your way. I do save this stuff and use it for for other other flies. So just take that, set it on that shelf. And what I'm going to do is I'm just using my fingers to roll it to set it where I want it. Now I'm going to grab some accent flash. I really like using gold in this. So I'm just going to grab a little clump of gold. You don't need a lot. I had some shorter fibers here, so I'm gonna put those in first. I'm just gonna stack it on that shelf. These long fibers, I'm just gonna cut. So what we're doing is we're just making the length of what we want our wing to be. Put that cold in there. And then I like to add a little bit of some pearly reddish pearl accent. This is that, uh, Relax flash. So let's cut a section of that. I just want the accent. So now that I've got my whole layer here done, I'm going to take this top brush, crimp it down to the other brush. Now I can use my hands to set my length to make sure I'm happy with the way my wings gone and if something's too long I can pull on it shorten it up a little bit if you want to and then I take my tool so if you want to tie a lot of stuff that I do you need a gator clip so I sandwich a lot of material I call it a garbage loop because I'm using all kinds of other garbage or other materials to make my own loops instead of using thread so basically that's what you're gonna get and then I just make my adjustment. So how big of a shoulder do you want to have? And in this case, I don't need all of this, but I do want to have a thick under shoulder. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut some of this off on the far side here to clean it up. So like so. And then I'm going to twist. And what I do is I just start slow. I've already spread that material out really well. So I get it going the way I want it to go. And then I don't push hard at first. And if you want to test where you are, you literally pull on the material. If you can't pull the material out, you're getting it to lock. So I just, any loose fibers, I'm just giving just a little tug to get that going the right direction. Make sure I pull, can pull out any loose fiber. And what I'll do is I test, I test. Make sure, see I had a little loose there. So it just needs a couple more spins. Now this should be tight, see? So now we're tight, I'm just gonna give that a good brush. Good brush. I'm just gonna wet all those fibers. You should use a cup of water, but I just, old habits die hard. So I'm getting all that material going one direction. And what I'm gonna do is let go of that crip. Now you need to use both hands. I guide this. You don't wanna go over top of it. You wanna keep all your material flowing and you wanna lock this in tight. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap this forward until you get to the eye. And if you do it right, you'll get it right to where you're wasting very little material. Like that's all that's left from all that brush. Just come in here, tight, trim that off. You can use your fingers or you can use your scissors. I push that wire back just so I could wrap over it and lock this in. All right, so now that I'm there, I'm just gonna really take my time and brush this out. I want all those fibers flowing. You'll see, I don't know if you can see it on video, but there is little hair particles flying everywhere right now. So now, just to finish this thing out simply, we're gonna take some olive brown ice dub. I don't need a lot of this, just a pinch. Then I'm gonna spin this on the thread pretty light. Because what we want to do is we want to figure eight those eyes. So start it in the collar and then we're going to figure eight around. And what I do is I'll rotate just so I can make sure I'm getting the bottom. Come to the front. Put that bead where you want. It's already getting tight. I'm going to lock that down. I'm going to add just a touch. Lock that in. I want that, I don't want that to be like a formed head. So I'm gonna really brush, get those fibers flowing on the top and on the bottom around the eyes. So that it blends right in with the wing. So you can see it's nice and fuzzy. So now to simply finish, just take some of your bone dry Push your material out of the way. Just, just put a little bead across the top. A little bead across the bottom. And basically I'm just touching the bead, letting it soak into the material, into the thread right there. And then I'm gonna hit that. Cut your thread, I give it one more brush. I'll show you how to put the hook on it. So now that you're here, we're done. So you take it right out. You flip it over to where your wire is. Okay, you can see your wire here. And I usually use a pair of hemostats. I just I had these little clamp, clamp, uh, clamps right now. I'm just gonna use that to more or less just pinch that down. Just to make it small enough. And then just like we did here, on this one, I'm gonna take it off just so I can show you how easy it is. Take your 
take your new one, take your hook, see the upper eye, right? I crimp that down just slightly, stick it through the eye, go around, open, done. Just like that. And you could ride this hook up or down, doesn't matter, whatever whatever your preference is. I'm a, I'm a hook down kind of guy, so just what I prefer. I'm never dredging the bottom of the river, so um, I don't snag this up very often. So but this is the Egg Raider 2.0 with the uh, garbage loop with uh, the flash and ostrich sandwich in between the chromatic brushes. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Good luck.